What's up guys, Duke Stoth here and we're doing a patch notes review for patch 3.15 under the sea which is uh, coming out next Tuesday and as usual we go over the skins real quick, achievements even quicker and then go into the balance. So there is a new skin for Kuko Khan which actually in my opinion does look really good in game. The art maybe doesn't do him quite the favor, he looks a little more like a basic T2 here, he is actually pretty nice. Uh, and um, then there is a Habua skin and they are both kind of obtainable in the same way via transferring from the Latam servers. They will be available for everyone else later. Um, we have a Freya tennis skin which is in the Summer of Smite which is uh, highly debated because of the face. I think overall the skin is pretty cool. It has a dropping effect of the tennis balls which is nice. We have the Medusa skin, which I think is really cool. The coolest thing about it is probably the specialty mode and the way the minions look when they, uh, the, the players look when they are ulted. And then we have the Erlangstein gold skin, which I think looks basically the default, but the legendary is pretty cool. And with that, let's look at the voice packs really quick. <laughs> I know what's coming already, so well, be prepared. My anaconda don't, my anaconda don't, my anaconda don't want none unless you got bounce on. Iris Y. No fundo encantado do lado de lá, a voz da Iara chamou, ouvi chamar. I understood her voice, so that's something. I don't know about you all, but I am planning to keep my Grand Slam streak. Let's not all be anemones. Let's cuttlefish. All right. Good hot puns, as usual, Kappa. And with that, we go into the achievements. We got achievements for Bacchus, we got achievements for Sobek, we got achievements for Terra, and that's it for this patch. We have uh, the Summer of Smite obviously finishing off with the final rewards. You get the Olympian music theme as well. And now comes something that is actually really interesting. We have uh, decreased spawn timers, respawn timers for Duel. So they're kind of like in the middle between previous patch and uh, the patches before that, I guess. We have auto skills for beginners uh, for the training map, which I think is good, so they, they learn how to do that. Uh, achievement system is now sorted differently. And this one is interesting. I actually read out. M MMR system adjustments. Smite has used an algorithm similar to true skill to implement our ELO or MMR ranking since its inception. In the early days of the game, we did some data crunching on results of matches to tune global parameters that the algorithm uses. One of these parameters, beta, broadly correlates as to how much specific knowledge a game requires. In other words, a title that an experienced gamer could pick up fast and do well at just based on uh, good wording. Do well at just based on raw talent would be a low beta. But one that required a lot of specific knowledge is a higher beta. In 3.15, we are retuning those parameters based on several weeks of research and processing large sets of our match history. What we found was that our initial beta was too low and we have adjusted it moving forward. We have also split the parameters for league and casuals as we found that, as expected, the makeup of players is different enough to allow the algorithm to optimize for each category. Rerunning match data with the new parameters will uh, show the system to be more accurate in predicting winners. For 3.15, we are not adjusting any MMR, but we are implementing the new parameters. The ex uh, we expect that moving forward, MMR and thus matchmaking will be more accurate and reliable. I think this is really good. It means that it's not going to be an immediate change, but it will take time to adjust. This was kind of announced that uh, things in that direction will happen eventually. But the retuning this value may have a large impact and I'm really happy. This is one of my biggest concerns with Smite. So I really hope that it works out as planned and I really hope that it does us all a favor. With that, on to the item changes. Enchanted Spear gets a price drop uh, down to 1550 gold, which I think is justifiable, doesn't really do much in itself. Because in the end, what we're talking about is the, the end result of the item, which is Spear of the Magus. Spear of the Magus gets a slight buff. Magical power increase from 40 to 50. So this is definitely not going to make the item broken or anything. I guess it's clear here because the flat reduction is still inferior to percentage penetration in most scenarios or percentage reduction. Uh, who this buffs, who I think didn't really need a buff uh, at the moment, is Freya. Because Freya can build this item very well in her current kit with Demonic Grip. 
And she gets even more power than before, but it's only 10, so it's not too bad. What is bad in my eyes is the next item. Poison Star. Poison Star is a new item that is a crit item and it only costs 2,000 gold. So let that sink in. It's incredibly cheap. It has 30 physical power, which is not that high by any means, but it's still power. And it has 15% critical strike chance. Uh, to compare that, uh, you have Wind Demon, which has 10 more power, 5% more crit for 600 gold more. The most crucial thing here is probably the passive. Critical hits on enemy gods afflict them with a weakening poison for 3 seconds. This poison slows them by 20% and reduces their damage output by 20%. So you get a slow and you also get a damage reduction coming from the enemy. I think this is pretty damn strong, especially given the price tag. You can build this item relatively early, I think. This even justifies triple crit more than before and it will slow the enemy down while nerfing their damage. This is extremely problematic for enemies that need to get close to you uh, or need to burst you, so it's bad for both assassins as well as warriors mostly. Maybe even guardians if you want to engage and you can't because you're slowed. And I don't see why hunters needed it. It's also going to have a huge impact on duel, I think. Though crit in duel is not necessarily good. With this item it might actually be better. The only thing that's that has to be kept in mind why what makes it maybe sound more broken than it is in the end is the fact that you have to crit to slow someone so you're not immediately going to slow someone uh, if you only have this item it's only a 15% chance but the more crit you get the worse it becomes and if you combine this with a wind demon for example and then get a, a third crit on the death bring on top of that you may have lower dps as if uh, you were to go malice but you will also reduce the damage of your enemy and you will slow them and you will do all of that as much weaker price tag so this is gonna be really scary i think and i'm not too happy about the state of this item we'll see how it pans out in the end but for now i think this is overdone it maybe doesn't even need the slow in my eyes maybe something else i was hoping for for old wind demon to come back in some form the anti-heal but slows on range characters are not fun to play against and uh, while frostbone was bad in conquest so far this item will be decent in Conquest and will be picked up and I'm scared. Arachne gets a fix for the webs that we're not supposed to stack somehow. Fafnir gets a nerf. The protection reduction in dragon form on cursed strength is nerfed from uh, like scaling up to 40%, from, from 20 to 40%, down to 20% at all ranks. I think this is very good. I think this was one of the most problematic parts of his kit that he had that free shred and still dealt high damage for a guardian along with everything else that his kit offers. So I think this nerf is, is definitely a step in the right direction. Is it going to break him? I don't think so. Is it going to make him weak? I doubt it, but it's definitely going to tone him down to a point where you don't have the feeling that you might want to first ban him in, in, in Conquest ranked. Gab's rolling out with some buffs. One of them is uh, increased scaling for rollout. I don't think anyone cares about that too much unless you're like one of those people who wants to uh, play gap mid. <laughs> and Cataclysm gets an increased stun. The stun, I think, is, is much more relevant because it now starts at 1.6 seconds and goes up to 2.0 instead of uh, going from 1 to 1.8. The problem here is that gap still has this initiation issue where he kind of needs blink in his uh, actives different from others. I think it's going to make him stronger. I think it's going to give uh, you more reason to pick him. I don't think it's going to break him, but at the same time you see Fafnir being nerfed now and you saw Bakos being nerfed a little bit. So I would, I would say we will see him more than before. Kuku Khan gets a, mostly a fix. It, the Wilbur was a little glitch, but mostly a fix. It shouldn't really impact the character all too much. Uh, Rada Tarsker gets a fix for Through the Cosmos. So the increased landing radius uh, is properly reflected, the tooltip. Uh, I hope that kind of fixes the glitches that the ability had, and in that case, it should definitely be good. Sobek gets VGS for his high seas, which a lot of people, I think, will be very happy about. Susanto gets a nerf, and this nerf is heavy. This nerf is only on one ability, but I think it's heavy. Jetstream reduced range from 55 to 45. And the cooldown is changed from 17 down to 13 to 16 at all ranks. I think one of these would have actually been enough, but um, 
The problem with Susano is more in his early burst and his ability to hit multiple targets with it. Hitting Deadstream that hard puts him down a notch. It takes away a decent amount of his escape potential. It takes away a decent amount of his engage and ranged poke potential. Uh, it's not going to make him completely useless, but I feel like he is going to get picked significantly less. And I actually think that this uh, change will probably take him out of first bands. I'm pretty sure. Simply because that range reduction will have such a heavy impact on his surviving and uh, attacking potential. Terra gets some changes too. Terra's standing stones and now have a, uh, a digital benefit. At a bonus damage equal to 7 plus 10% of your magical power to Terra's basic attacks while standing stones is active. So she's gonna hit a little harder with her basic attacks, which is cool. I have a feeling that somebody will find a way to somehow abuse that scaling and somehow break it. And that's gonna be a crazy Terra AA build, but we'll see. Crushing Earth. Um, fixed uh, this ability stunning players who were running or strafing into the walls from outside. Good. Fixed this ability where... Fixed this ability where players were getting blocked before the walls were actually visible. Right. Also good. So glitches are fixed, but at the same time the casting time is reduced from 1.1 seconds to 0.7 seconds. Significant difference. And I am pretty sure we're going to be able to feel that. And hopefully it takes away the glitch of if you spam it, it's going to take longer to actually activate as well. If it does, then this ability will feel a lot more intuitive. Terra was not underperforming, was said on the patch notes. So I think she's actually doing decently. And this is just a, a welcome change in that regard. Ulr gets a buff and nobody knows why. Uh, Ulr apparently needs a buff to his clear and pressure and boxing and insta get potential so uh harold blade gets 20 percent extra on all ranks which is especially impactful early i think this is going to be problematic uh, given that the x stun will be a lot more impactful then again if you can't let the x stun it's irrelevant so 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 but in the end I, i'm not quite sure why uh didn't see him needing that buff all that much but i guess so and shivalanka gets a little bug fix where he could get stuck that no longer exists that's it for the patch notes once again they're coming out next tuesday the pts will uh, this time be open on friday thank you guys for watching new videos every day duke sloth out <laughs>